found that more accessible for me than uh, than I did uh, Gnome Shell. And I think maybe it boils down to um, the fact that I was a, I wouldn't say the word advocate, but a strong supporter. I've always been a strong supporter of Ubuntu. But I can actually see with Unity the direction they're trying to take. Um, I introduced many new users to Ubuntu, um, along with uh, quite a few derivatives of it. And, uh, no, I, I didn't have anything. I mean, like I say, it wasn't my, it, it wasn't my way of working, but all in all, it was a very good experience because, like I said, the wife, uh, the wife did enjoy it. So, but that was my theory on, on Unity. Yeah, um, I think Ubuntu is always going to target. It's, it's very easy to attack the uh, the larger players for all sorts of reasons. I think one of the um, most fundamental things about it is if you go after the big guys, uh, you will get noticed a lot better than the small guys. Uh, so if you are going to dedicate some time to criticizing someone or going after someone, you want to, to at least ensure that something is above your league. So if somebody makes a distribution that's being used by, say, 12 people, uh, you probably won't want to spend too much time um, upsetting these people. There is no point to it. The other thing that, that happens is, of course, there is the issue of jealousy, there is the issue of, uh, uh, of, of trying to uh, make the most influence. And I think that not many people will... Well, I almost find a very apologetic tone when I see somebody reviewing a distro like Vulvix. And even if they don't like the distro, they try to be very kind of cooperative. And at the same time, the people who would review the distro to begin with would be very cooperative people, people who are eager to actually like the distribution, not people who are looking to uh, sort of uh, um, to sort of go after the small the small players and after the small people. And as the players grow bigger, it becomes more acceptable to criticize them. And I think this is one of the, the things that actually Canonical did pretty well against. Because uh, they were very quickly becoming leaders in, in Linux, and they were trying to appease the community, which was ready to serve you know, certain distributions like, uh, I don't know, Fedora, let's say, or... Um, and Driva was, you know, they were ready to basically slaughter each other all of the, the, of the user base and trying to destroy each other's reputation. And I think this is one of the reasons, in fact, Ubuntu still has a community manager uh, whose job in part is to go around between people and trying to ensure that they, give, they, basically, they basically manage to keep a healthy relationship even with the critics of the distro. Uh, and it's a smart decision that they make, and I know they, uh, in, in different companies they have the same type of thing. Um, but, yeah, so, again, like I say, if, if Fedora or Red Hat was the dominant player in all, in all cases, people would basically go after the, uh, the big players, things like Fedora, and, and try to advocate for the underdog, and that's just natural what people do, so. Just very briefly before we move on to, to the next topic, I, th- I think I should really mention as well as uh, Sabayon, um, which seems to be gaining in, in pace recently. It's um, what we need to remember is this isn't made, uh, isn't maintained by a large organisation like Canonical. This is, uh, I don't want to cheapen the uh, developers behind it, but it literally is just enthusiasts and bedroom coders who um, who made the project possible. And it's everywhere I'm looking, it's receiving. It's been mentioned quite a few times on the, a lot of the big sites that I, uh, I follow via RSS feed. So that's something very good. It, it's climbing up the rank, the ranks in the distro watch charts as well, which is uh, another good sign. And that's a testament to how, dare I say, out of the box this is. Uh, I've recently said that I've had less problems with uh, Spion than I did with some of the mainstream distros, which uh, are on everybody's lips. Uh, Linux Mint, for example, uh, I've been having, I've had that on my machine now. Quite a few, uh, quite a few weeks, and uh, it was I intended. It was really just a stopgap after I was sorting my machine out, and uh, with a view to putting Sublime back on. And uh, now that some of the cracks are starting to show, which I'll be probably covering when I've got a big incident better later on, it just shows. It's a testament really to Sublime, which I had no issues with whatsoever. I mean, it was a, a few bugs here and there when I was uh, running the previous version, but nothing that wasn't fixable. That was compared to Mint. Uh, I've had quite a few issues which have been quite debilitating to my uh, online experience. So uh, I'll be talking about those later on. Uh, which, version of, uh, which version of Linux Mint was it? 11.04. 11.04, 64. The Gnome version. Um, 
Genau. Yes. Ja, yeah. 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 um, they have, you have to remember, is they have to basically hack around the Ubuntu 11.04, uh, which doesn't come with a classic desktop. That's GNOME-based. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think this has caused some issues. I mean, one of the things Mint, Linux Mint, was trying to keep consistent was the Mint menu and all kinds of tools, uh, which were built upon and around the existing framework in GNOME 2.3. 2.30, things like that. Uh, and one of the issues they've had since release 10, which by the way was an excellent release and I installed it for uh, a person uh, a few days ago, uh, one of the issues they had is that they had to do a lot of the work instead of inherit a lot of the power from Canonical. They had to try within the capacity of mostly, I think they only have two full-time developers Uh, and they had to try and find a way to get things to work well, to integrate well with the rest of the Ubuntu repositories and everything else. Mm -hmm. And I think it's proven a bit tricky, and eventually they might have to uh, drift towards Unity to at least save, save themselves some of the trouble associated with trying to do something different from Ubuntu while still being based on Ubuntu. I mean, probably the reason I might sound overly harsh on Mint, but I mean, part of the reason was that Mint is, is sold, uh, is promoted to people who want out-of-the-box experience, and people who, who are new to Linux, as well as those experienced uh, grizzled old veterans. And some of the issues I've had, although were very easy to solve and work around, for the new Linux user who's learning the system and used to a new way of working, are going to completely completely destroy or hamper that progress. For example, two very quick ones. On my um, indicator app, um, applications will often just completely vanish. So I could have a, an application running in the background, for example, uh, in a, a, a torrent uh, client running in the background, and it would just completely vanish. And for all instances, that program is closed. Well, it's not. It's running in the background, but there's no way of actually accessing it without attempting to reload the program and finding the Zoe instance of it running somewhere else. That was the first one. The second, a very uh, problematic uh, issue I had with it was um, the virtual desktops. I've got four virtual desktops and occasionally, seemingly completely at random, it will freeze and uh, the desktop image that it displays is a frozen, frozen version of what the desktop was when you actually hit upon that particular uh, virtual desktop and you can't do anything with it. You've then got to fiddle around with the keys until it unlocks itself and uh, moves you back to the, the previous. Uh, so that was two problems. Like yeah. I say, not not hard issues to to deal with, but for a new user who Linux Mint is aimed at as well as the, the, the more advanced user, these are problems which would be severe stumbling blocks. And uh, so that was two. I'll be covering it probably more in uh, greater detail later on. Um, Roy, I think we should move on to the next topic, uh, which will be about social networking, just very briefly. I had the pleasure of getting a, an invite to uh, Diaspora and Google Plus virtually at the same time. Uh, so I was able to cast my eye briefly I over. I think everyone gets some invitations at least to the latter one. Um, Google is a bit problematic from my point of view. Uh, you don't actually have to opt into uh, receiving messages, and you tend to get a whole torrent of invitations <laughs> of people. It, it's interesting. I wonder how many sorts of well, and it's always on, on behalf of the user. We very yeah. often know. So it's a way of, I mean, I know some sites that have been sued for using similar strategies or basically they make an appeal on behalf of your friend to join the site and do something on the site in order to read or, you know, to connect with your friend. Uh, actually, Facebook did something very similar when you try to delete accounts, which uh, I did delete accounts for quite a few people recently because they, they didn't, of course, Facebook makes it very difficult to delete accounts. You have to find the back doors and stuff to actually do that. Uh, but one of the things that Facebook is doing is a sort of a emotional blackmail of sorts of trying to say, oh, please don't delete your account. You won't be able to communicate with, you know, this person, that person, if you happen to know. Mm. Uh, and, and what Google is doing, it's basically shoving loads of names of your friends and stuff into your inbox and say, oh, you know, your friends want to meet you, but, you know, oh, poor you, you know, oh, you could create an account. And, you know, join your friends now. Uh, so I was very much against that. I, I think it was a bit too aggressive as a marketing technique and as a way of trying to grow the population of Google+. Plus. 
Well, I had to put an apology on Identica because of that, because what I wasn't aware of, when you when you join Google+, Plus, if you join Google+, Plus, you'll see a big list of suggested people that it uh, 